I recently read Joy at Work by Scott Sunshine and Marie Kondo. Imagine starting your day by stepping into a disastrous office. There are books and papers stacked up in the corner, dirty coffee mugs, USB sticks and pens littering your desk, and boxes piled up to the ceiling. The clutter is overwhelming, and as your attention is being pulled by the different objects in the environment, you're losing energy even before you start working. At UCLA, studies show that working in a cluttered space elevates cortisol levels, which results in chronic stress and can lead to depression and insomnia. What's more, if others see your cluttered office, they will view you as incompetent and untrustworthy. If you struggle with a cluttered office and want to eliminate stress and give the impression to others that you can be trusted with important work, then it might be worthwhile trying the KonMari method explained in Joy at Work. Co-author Marie Kondo, famous for her last book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, created the Spark Joy movement with the KonMari method. Kondo's KonMari method is best known for decluttering people's home closets. If you were to use the KonMari method in your closet, you would take all the clothes out of your closet, put them in a pile in the middle of your room, then pick up one piece of clothing at a time and ask, does this spark joy? If a piece of clothing was a source of joy when you bought it, but that joy has now faded, you thank that object for fulfilling its purpose and then you discard it or donate it. The act of thanking the object for being useful during a time in your life makes the discarding and donating process much less stressful. After you've gone through all your clothes piled up in the middle of the room, you're left with just the clothes that spark joy. Now every time you open your closet, that feeling of overwhelm is replaced with a new feeling of gratitude, since everything you see is a source of joy. Many of Kondo's clients think they have nothing to throw away when they start, but often throw away two-thirds of the items in their closet. The secret is organizing all the items in the closet at one time, because it allows you to compare all the items and create different categories, like summer and winter clothes, then reserve a space in your closet for each category. That way you can stay tidy because you'll know exactly where an item should go when it enters your closet. At this point, you might be wondering, wait, there's no way I could do this for my office. If a stapler or an expense report doesn't spark joy, I can't just throw it out. Well, that's why Marie Kondo and Scott Sunshine have modified the KonMari method for your workspace by including three questions. First, is this item necessary to do my job? This is where you keep your stapler or your hole punch or your highlighter. Question two, will this item contribute to a joyful future? You could keep that manual that you need to complete a project you're working on that if successful could lead to a promotion. And question three, does this spark joy? Items that spark joy include pictures of your family, a piece of memorabilia on your desk, like a bobblehead of your favorite athlete that you got from a game that you went to with your kid, or a potted plant on your desk. After this video, Try using those three questions to organize the books and manuals in your home office. Start by gathering all of your books and manuals in a single pile in the middle of your office. Then pick up one item at a time and ask the three questions. Is this essential for my job? Does it contribute to a joyful future? Or does it spark joy? If a book doesn't answer yes to any of those three questions, you default to discarding it or donating it. Books that don't make the cut and get discarded or donated are books that you were gifted, but you honestly have no intention of reading, or books that you bought with enthusiasm at one point, but you never got around to reading them and your enthusiasm has faded, or books that have served their purpose. They've helped you complete a project, but are no longer needed. As the authors say, it's time to let them go with gratitude for the joy they gave you in the past. Now the books that are left can go back on your bookshelf and now when you walk into your office, the sight of that bookshelf can be a source of joy and give you an extra boost of energy you need to start the day. Now do the same with all the papers in your office. Keep only the papers that are necessary to your job, contribute to a joyful future, or spark joy. Then store those papers in upright folders in a filing cabinet, not in a pile in a box under your desk. After that, Tackle all miscellaneous items like USB sticks, sticky notes, paper clips, electronic gadgets, coffee mugs, or supplements. When you're done sorting these, using the three questions, make a space in your desk for each category of miscellaneous items. That way they're out of sight and you know exactly where new items go if you decide to keep them. 
Then lastly, tackle all the sentimental items you have, like framed pictures, gifts from your children, or awards you received in the past. These are often the hardest to part with, but if you thank them for the joy they once provided and acknowledge that their time has come and gone, it's easier to retire them and discard them. But if you're still struggling, research shows that simply taking a picture of the item will make it easier to part with. Now that you've tackled the clutter in your physical workspace, it's time to address the clutter in your digital workspace. When you fire up your laptop or computer to start the workday, what does your desktop look like? Is it like Marie Kondo's, a beautiful background picture with just one folder in the corner called storage? Or is it more like how co-author Scott Sunshine's desktop used to look like? A desktop with so many files that Scott had to squint to read the file titles. Mine was a lot like the latter. Every time I started my computer, I was instantly overwhelmed. So I did the KonMari method for each item on my desktop by asking a variation of the three questions I just explained for sorting your physical space. The three digital workspace questions are one, do I need this file to get my job done? This could be a Word document I'm using to create my next presentation, or a photo I need to put in my next blog post. Second, will it provide me with guidance or inspiration for future work? This could be a document of an old project that I can save and review when I start a similar project in the future. Or it could be a quick note I wrote for a project I want to start someday. And lastly, does this file spark joy right now? This could be a screenshot of my YouTube analytics showing that I hit a goal that I set for myself last year, or it could be photos of my family. After asking these three questions, what often gets removed and sent to the trash bin are applications I thought would be helpful, but I never use. Documents that were saved to my desktop because it was an easy place to save them, but are no longer needed. Or photos that I've uploaded to social media or attached to an email that I can find in the cloud if I ever need them. After purging most of the items on my desktop, I take the remaining items and move them into one of three folders off my desktop. Working, Records, and Archive. The Working folder contains subfolders for each project I'm working on. If I have more than 10 projects, I make an inactive projects folder and put any inactive projects in there. The records folder is a place for all non-project related photos and documents I want to keep, like work procedures or photos of my family. The archive folder is for all old project files that I may need to complete future projects. Now, when I start work in the morning, I walk into a clean office, turn on my computer to see a clean desktop, and get to work on my next project without clutter-inducing anxiety. In the end, when you learn to take control of your physical and digital workspaces, you will feel more in control of your work life, which will make work more joyful. And when you just keep things that are necessary for your job, provide joy, and contribute to a joyful future, you are left with only items you are grateful for. That was the core message that I gathered from Joy at Work by Marie Kondo and Scott Sunshine. This book provides many more great ways to declutter your work life and experience more joy at work. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.